uh, definitely the most useful feature of iTween is the motion path that you can set up. Um, but as most of you probably know by now, it's a little difficult to actually um, structure your path. Um, I've used uh, blank gizmos, I've used uh, geometry that I don't render. There's all kinds of uh, different techniques you can use to actually um, visually see your path um, and then take those transforms or those vector threes, throw them into your um, your iTween move two and then you have a nice Bezier path to follow. But a lot of that can really clutter your hierarchy, it can be a lot to maintain, it can get messy. Um, so I went ahead and made a new script <clears throat> which is called iTween path um, which should make this hopefully a lot easier for everybody. It's a nice little add-on. Um, so once you have it installed, um, you can just go ahead and add the iTween path to anything in your scene. It does not matter what you add it to. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> in this case, I'm using on the main camera. Um, as soon as it's added, you will see in the inspector for this object, in this case the camera, um, that the node count is already set to 2. Um, that's just because iTween um, paths require at least two points in order to make their curves. So that's why you're, um, it's automatically set to two at this point, in this case. <clears throat> so immediately you'll notice that we have two paths points that we can move around. And if we slide the inspector, we can add more points. They're kind of clumped, clumped together here, so I'll pull them out. Um, and you'll see we have a path, a nice easy to use path. Um, uh, it fully supports undo, so you can move a path point and uh, undo where it was. Um, you can name your paths, which is actually um, very important um, for actually getting the values out of the paths, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, we'll call this path, we'll call this one um, box in. Um, you can uh, set up multiple paths on one object, so let's go ahead and add another instance of iTween path. Um, and it, it, it gets a little cluttered in your um, scene view, but with some patience, you'll love the fact that you can actually easily uh, maintain your paths this way, and you know, you'll get used to the clutter and you can work around this. Um, to make it a little less difficult, I added the option to um, color your paths in the uh, scene view, which is kind of nice. Uh, in this case, we'll make this one pink. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and name this other path. Uh, we'll call it box out. Let's go ahead and put a few more path points in here. Um, no points in the path default to zero, zero, zero. So once you've generated them, you just need to drag them around to where you, where you kind of want them. All right, so again, this is very cluttered, but you can see with a little bit of patience, you can get a good um, bird's eye view of what you're kind of working on here. Um, another thing to note is that if you do decide to um, shorten your path, um, you will receive an error or a pop-up, a notification to let you know that you're actually permanently going to destroy your path. And it's just a nice little thing here to kind of make sure you don't accidentally mess up and, and remove um, uh, parts of the curve that you don't want to, to kill. Okay, so now that we have two paths in this case set up, <clears throat> again, one's called box in, one's called box out. Um, let's go ahead and make use of this iTween path script. Let's go ahead and make a cube in here. Uh, we will set it to zero, zero, zero. Okay. Um, and I made a, a quick test script that we'll go ahead and put on here. Let's see what this looks like. Okay. Um, and now it's it's pretty easy. The way you get um, a hold of that that path data that you drew out is very simple. You just go ahead and just like normally you would do an iTween move to you would make a reference to game object. Again, I'm running through this because obviously I, I made iTween and I know what all this garbage means. So hopefully after a little bit of practice, you guys will, you know, get a hang of this too. Okay. <clears throat> and in the hash, you put your entry in for path. And to get the path we want, we make a call to iTween path. And then we use the get path tool in there. And then we just simply put in the name of it that we put in, in the inspector. In this case, well, actually I've forgotten because it's a little late for, uh, pardon me. All right, this one's called box in, okay? That's the one we want it to use. Um, let's go ahead and extend the time a good bit. All right, let's make sure I didn't mess up here. Do, 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 do. Oh, gotta close out the uh, hash. Okay, and 
now, if I didn't make any mistakes, we should be able to hit play and watch this box move. There you go. Let's uh, let's pull out a little bit. And actually, let's put a light in here so you guys can see it's a little bit better. Okay, let's hit play. And there you go, it runs through the path. Um, we'll go ahead and put them both on so you can, you can actually see it follow the path. Uh, one thing to note, by the way, is that when you have handles showing in your scene view like we do now, they are pretty processor intensive. So you will notice some chugging um, if you have the uh, handles um, highlighted as I do it like this. I can click off the main camera and therefore the handles won't be used and the performance is much better. And if you want to use that other path we made, which in this case it's called um, box out, all we need to do is go back over to our test here. And when we're making this call to get path, simply replace that, come back over, hit play, and it uses that path. Which again, we can see it actually following it like this. And if you want to make it a little bit smoother here, we can just go ahead and change the ease type real quick. Um, so it would be ease type. And we'll use um, for paths. I find that ease in out sign is is, is a nice uh, is a nice way to go. And since the beginning of the path is way far away from the box, let's just go ahead and kind of get it closer a little bit here. Actually, let's uh, let's vertex snap it by holding down V. We can drag it to get closer to that box. And let's hit play. And we should have a nice, smooth path. All right, that's the iTween path uh, helper for uh, iTween to help you guys visually edit your paths. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, good luck.